Oh, I'm next. Can I look like that hula hooping? <laughs> hula hooping? Yeah. I feel a bit ill today. I got in the van and sat on a bullet. <laughs> you know, you know, when you get kicked in the nuts when you're a kid and you feel a bit sick. Yes. That. Oh God. Every time I move, I'm like, <laughs> horrendous. Anyway, we haven't done a video for a while, have we? Nice. No, We've been, been while. busy. We've been busy doing studio things. That's why. So apologies. Here's a video for you, lovely people. One of the most famous recording studios in the world, London's Abbey Road is opening its doors to give the public a rare chance of a curated tour from the 9th to the 15th of August. £100 gives you a roughly 90-minute visit to the studios where you get to see all trois of the famous recording rooms, control rooms and the legendary echo chamber, which was full up with crap the last time I went, but I'm sure they'll have cleared it out for Abbey Road Open House, as they're calling it. The cafe is well worth a visit too if the public are allowed in there, but there's no mention of that on the website, so I'm guessing you won't be. But what is mentioned on the website is the standard Abbey Road policy of absolutely no photography or video. So if you're hoping to grab a selfie in front of the Mrs. Mills piano, you're going to be out of luck. And if you do sneak one on Instaface or Bookagram or attempt to tick a tock, you'll probably get Abbey Road's legal team on your back fairly quickly. So bear that in mind if that's a must have from your visit, which it kind of would be, probably. wouldn't it? You want to be able to lighten up Abbey Road. Of course, anyone at any time can head down and take photos of themselves on the famous Zebra Crossing. And to aid in this, the studios have set up a webcam pointed at the crossing and you can go back in time to view footage of your visit and grab a screenshot. I checked the webcam out this morning and I immediately felt a bit sick. Why? Have a listen to this. What's wrong with that? Answers in the comments, please, and I'll give you a clue. Sum the signal to mono. Abbey Road, there's a major flaw here that nobody seems to have noticed, and you're one of the most famous recording studios in the world. Sort it out. Tickets are available from abbeyroad.com if you're interested. Now for some present day production news, and we are delighted to announce that Sam Reck has moved into one of our studios here, hey. and he's taking care of the songwriting and production side of our business, which is excellent news for both us and you. And here's why. In my face, putting things in my face, who's ready to my face. No more Mark masterpieces. I'll be back. Sam is really great at what he does and we'll be working on a ton of new content for you all on songwriting, music theory and all that jazz, but in typical PDP style and <laughs> just looking at the cat <laughs> and in a very easy to understand and digest form. And of course, it's all free. We're not trying to push you towards a paid course with teaser videos. No. So welcome, Sam. He's behind the camera right here, taking some snaps for Instagram at the moment. Give give the camera Come a wave. Away. Give a wave. Come on, give a wave. Come on, don't Come be shy. Side. Don't be shy. The eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that this room has changed a little bit and that we've got different monitors in here and indeed we have the monitors we had in here before have gone back to their ancestral home in our main control room with young james here who will be using them to their full potential and this has now become my dedicated mastering room so we've bought in our atc scm 200s and spent ages setting them up to sound at their very best we've done a whole video on this as part two of our acoustics video and that will be out in a couple of days so make sure you've subscribed and hit the ding dong to be notified of that Talking of monitors, we've also reached out to some dealers in London and requested we do a monitor shootout with them so that we can help you make a more informed decision when it comes to choosing speakers for your room. I must admit, I'm a bit out of touch when it comes to more budget-friendly monitoring solutions these days, and I haven't bought a pair of near-field monitors since about 1764. So it will be good for us to get a clear idea of what's available today so that we can then help you guys and girls make an informed decision. So staying with the monitor theme, we're also going to be paying to oh, shit. Staying with the monitor theme, we're also going to be paying a visit to Kerr Acoustic, a relatively new monitor company who are making major waves in the hi-fi world, who are based about an hour north of us just outside of Cambridge. Mark paid them a visit yesterday to hear their flagship K100 system. How do you get on? It was absolutely mind-blowing. So their hi-fi speakers are based very much on a studio monitor paradigm. They're super accurate, super detailed, just 
incredible, um, really good. So I'm looking forward to getting them in here, comparing them to the ATCs. Jess is going to bring us a demo pair down so we can have a good, proper session, do a nice review. And um, yeah, really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that too. And as well as that, we'll be doing a factory tour. So for those of you keen on speaker design, or if you're just intrigued as to why monitors cost five figures sometimes, you'll see how they're made. In other news, FabFilter have just launched Timeless 3, an updated version of their delay plugin, which gains a more streamlined user interface, as well as a number of useful extra features, including a new effects section, which can add drive, lo-fi, diffuse, dynamics, and pitch effects to the feedback path. And they've also introduced an all new preset library to incorporate some of those new features. Right in the corner, I can just see Sam dancing. It's really <laughs> off-putting. Also, heading back into monitor world again, and PreSonus have announced a new passive monitor controller, the MicroStation BT. This offers a simple passive attenuation control with a mute button and a separate sub output mirrored on a single RCA and quarter inch jack output. The BT stands for Bluetooth and you can pair a Bluetooth device to it, such as a phone or a tablet or a Bluetooth cat, and use that as a secondary input source. Handy for a being your mixes against commercial material, for example. The use is, this isn't, the unit is priced at around 130 for <laughs> sake. The, the, the unit is priced at around, oh, who gives a fuck how much it costs? Go to, $39. go to their website and have a look. So that's it for this episode. Other than thank you to all of you who have subscribed recently, yeah. and we hope you're all enjoying our content. Recently, we hit 20,000 subscribers and over a million views on the channel, and that's Pretty insane, that's mind blowing. And the, the same day, the same day the yes. subscriber counter hit 20,000 and we also got a, a million views in total on the whole channel since we started last year. So that's absolutely amazing. Thanks to everyone that's watched, subscribed, dung the ding dong and done other dung items probably. And just out of interest at the time of recording, we've now got 25,000 subs, so it's growing pretty nicely. It's mad, it's going mad, isn't it? So thanks you lot. Yeah, thanks for watching. You'll see us in the next one. Can I go and soothe my testicle now. Come on. Thanks. Come on in. Ooh. Oh god. Ah. In my face. Putting things in my face. Put relish in my face. Keep on the zin. My face. Alpacas in my face. Caps of tea in my face. Chocolate bars in my face. And scientists in
Jesus.